uh, what is the kind of employment opportunity that you have been able to provide. Uh, also, the future courses. There are too many things, uh, so you could answer one by one. Uh, the idea and the, the kind of uh, education that we impart. So, thank you very much for inviting. The first thing is uh, we all know that one of the biggest challenges today and in the past we have seen from the education was that the outcome which is largely linked to the employer who use has been found to be challenging. Most of the surveys has been talking about it most of the times. So the purpose with which this university was initiated and the act was created was that that this institution's output in the form of the students who are passing out, the rate of employable, employable students increases. So the gap between the educator and the employable that we have today reduces. That was the one first important thing. The second thing was that uh, this institution would become a multidisciplinary institution, not only skill. No, today we have a concept about uh, skilling and this skilling is largely linked to the blue collar jobs. So that was one, uh, one aspect that we had to take care that it does not get itself labeled with the blue collar jobs. So skilling in the larger context and then bringing in a multidisciplinary approach. And the third important aspect was that the funnel of skilling has to start right from the early childhood days of the student. And that's what the national education policy also now talks about it. So the act was designed in such a way that we have a KG to PG model getting institutionalized in Haryana for the first time. So with these objectives, the institution started its operations in 2017 when the Prime Minister uh, laid its foundation stone. And what we have been doing, there are something very, uh, very different, disruptive and innovative initiatives that we have done. Let me tell you one by one what we have done. Uh, unlike the normal graduation or the diplomas or the programs that we run, we offer, we design, we create work integrated uh, programs. So today whether we are offering diploma, degree, graduate, postgraduate programs, all of them are work integrated programs. For example, if for a graduate program, three year graduate program, someone has to earn 120 credits, 40 credits each semester, three semesters, 120 credit. Normal pattern in every institution would be that almost 90% of the credits are in the classroom, 5% credits would be in the workshop or lab. So that's how the, the year or the credits get completed. In our university, 60% and 40% credits have been uh, you know, bifurcated. 60% of the credits have to be earned through work. So, for example, with with a company like Maruti we, or a Hero Motor or a bank or an IBM like company, when we design an undergraduate program, we do not design program because we have to design a program. We design program because there is a demand for certain job roles. So, the job roles become the basis for the university to design a program. And then we do a reverse work on the basis of the need of the job role. We break that job role and then align certain learning components to it, scaling components to it. And based on that, 40% of the syllabus part through the curriculum is delivered in the class and the workshop. 60% of the curriculum is delivered by the student by going to the workplace and working in those specific areas. So that's how we integrate the work part and the classroom part and eventually what happens that the student becomes job ready for the moment the student completes his degree. The second important thing is the flexible entry and exit model. So in this, normally we have seen graduation until you complete the program, you cannot exit. But in our university, the, there are multiple options to a student. So when a student enters into an undergraduate program, he or she has an option to exit at each level, year one, year two, year three. And at each level, because it has been mapped to a specific job role, so a student, if he or she wants to exit into the labor market, the student can exit and apply for those job roles. But there is also a chance the student may not be able to succeed in the complete program in that first year. There is an option of qualification. So we have curated qualifications. So a student has an option to get certified on that qualification as well. So by that, uh, by that option, it provides a multiple certification opportunity to the student. 
By this way, a student can exit and then re-enter back whenever the student wants to come back. So making this flexible uh, uh, entry and exit process. The third important thing is, because the work component is integrated into it, the employers, all the employers who are working with us for different UGPG programs, they have signed an MOU with us that during the 60% of the work component, student will be provided stipend uh, for the period they work. So on an average, a student during his two to three year program earns two to three lakh rupees. Now in my case, 60% of the students come from the rural area. And earlier they didn't have greater opportunities in those respective regions. And by coming here, they are not financially dependent on their parents. They earn almost two to three lakh rupees during the program and thereby make this program and earn and learn money. The most important part that we uh, see at the end of the program, the same employer becomes the first employer of choice for the student. Because the moment they finish their program, the employer doesn't want to leave the student. So, net then, our UGPG programs have become completely job line. And the moment a student completes any of the levels, he or she is ready for the job and the industry picks him. We also curate uh, entrepreneurship into it. A student has a choice to also exit and do their own work. The second uh, initiative we have created in the university, in the university is a recognition of prior learning in higher education. Most of the uh, people don't know this, that in India today when you calculate gross enrollment ratio, it is calculated on 18 to 24 years of age. So 18 to 24 years of age, the total population is somewhere around 140 million. The current the number of uh, students enrolled in higher education by the latest data is around 40 million. So 100 million of the students are not enrolled in the higher education. The surveys say, out of that 100 million, almost 50% of the students are 12 pass or equivalent, but they are not in higher education. Means they are eligible to be in higher education, but they are not in higher education. What our university has done now, a new initiative, that is the recognition of prior learning in higher education. So what we are doing, we are directly working with industries. For example, in one company, JMR Maruti, we work for a job group called Tool and Dye Engineers. This is a very old company, 40 year old company. They have people engaged in their companies in Tool and Dye. And they join somewhere uh, 25 years, 20 years, 15 years, but they don't have a graduate qualification or a certified qualification. So what we do, we enroll such students, assess them against their experience, map that experience to the syllabus of the program, exempt them from the math experience and provide them a bridge course to complete a diploma or a degree in the university. By this way, we are going to facilitate the GR as well in the country because the unenrolled population, which is a huge population, which was almost ignored, that is now getting socially included. So at for this time, I'll stop here and uh, I'll answer other questions later. Uh, Mr. Arora, Skilling. Till now, uh, when we talk about skilling, we focus more on the higher education, uh, the national education policy, 